I'm going to start recording. All right, recording has started, so we can proceed. So um, we have several items to discuss, and I think the first one is um, on the agenda is to approve the minutes from the previous meetings, but we only have the one, the first, um, the minutes of the first meeting. Um, does anybody have any comment? I think we have the minutes of the 811 min meeting as well. That was in the. Oh, I didn't see. They were, uh, those were uploaded very late today, Irina. Those came in at um, about 3 p.m. or something. Okay, so I must confess that the 811 minutes I did not see. Um, I read the ones on 84. So shall we go one at a time and I can read it live? <clears throat> um, I think we should do the 8-4. We might have to wait on the 8-11, but even before that, we need a note taker if Joseph is not Yes, oh, that's true. So any volunteer for note taking? Um, I'll, I'll volunteer. So Thank here's, you. A cra here's a crazy question. This meeting is recorded. Like, I understand someone needs to take minutes from it, but couldn't Joe review the meeting recording and take his minutes from that? Yep. Love it. There's that too, Peggy. Just throwing well, it out there. It would also be an advantage to him because then he would know what happened. Okay. So I need to send right. him As an email that he needs to make the minutes. Right. So this 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 recording, the recorded meeting today should be recording would stop tonight and it would be uploaded to YouTube tomorrow morning. So Joe should be able to re review it at that point um, and take okay. his minutes from there. Okay. Okay, so I'm not going to take minutes. No, thank you. Um, so um, the minutes from August 4th. Anybody has any comment? Yeah. I was just... So I still don't see the minutes from, oh, hold on. Uh, I don't see the minutes from August 4th. Like they're not in the packets. Maybe they later. are. They're in the packet, the previous. In, oh, they're in last yeah. week's packet. Okay. <clears throat> I think if we can just put like everything for the one meeting in the same <laughs> packet, yes. that would be great. That's the goal. If that didn't happen, we'll clean it up. So, I mean, do you see in the minutes? It says yeah. this note is right here about. That note pursuant to chapter 20 that the meeting's conducted remotely. So we can just read that from the minutes from for next okay. time. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. That's, thank you. I, I remember that I read it at some point, but then, then I forgot. Thank you. Um, does anybody has any comments or corrections for the August 4th minute, minutes? I'm no? fine. So I move to approve the minutes. Second. Uh, Marion Levstein. I wasn't there. Do I approve minutes for a meeting that I didn't attend? You can uh, abstain. I'll abstain. Um, Tommy Park. Aye, you approve. Peggy. Approve. Um, Tracy. Approve. Irene approved. Irene have approved. So the motion passes. <laughs> so I have a question about the minutes before we move on. Um, do we think that these minutes are of sufficient detail for our purposes or what do you guys think? I know as somebody who used to take a lot of minutes, right? Sometimes minutes can be super short and sometimes they can be super long. And does this, so I, is this I, a good balance for people? So this is a good question. I looked at the files from 2011. I went into the town hall and did that. And I found the minutes to be frustratingly short. Like there was very little real information in them. So in some, on the one hand, I'd say, oh no, we want more detail. But on the other hand, it's recorded. If somebody wants to go and see what actually happened, including us, we can do that. So I, I think it's okay. So my question, uh, this will have a... Yes, um, except 
Um, I think how it works is that only the written minutes are on record. So it is important, particularly for this body, to find out has that changed in terms of what is required by official bodies. So I know it seems like uh, counterintuitive because it's video, um, but I believe only the minutes are entered as official record. Therefore, um, theoretically, you could get rid of video eventually. You know, archiving, that type of thing becomes problematic. Um, and I don't think our town has an official means of doing this, particularly within their kind of weird relationship with Amherst Media right now. So I would check to make sure that the video can be entered as an official record as well. Okay, we'll check. That's a good question. Also, yeah. I guess related to that, it's just in terms of, and you bring up a good point, it's just how much storage is required to keep all these meetings. Like if it becomes the official record, what's the time period for which it has to be like stored? We have, we have, because we're a government entity, we have unlimited storage on YouTube and oh. Zoom. So we don't need to, we don't, we're not, we're not affected by that. So this video will be on YouTube until the end of time, until the end of YouTube. Well, I mean, I'll just say, because I work at, <laughs> right, I work at UMass and they were using online storage through Box. And when they right. set it up or the contract originally, they said unlimited storage for all. And then they realized, wait a minute, we have a really big campus and people are uploading terabytes and terabytes of data. Right. And uh, and now it's gotten really expensive and we're gonna change. And now you don't have unlimited storage. So, right. I mean, just, <clears throat> and just things change, but. That's a great, Can, it's, it's a great yeah. conversation for us to have. In yeah, town. no, that's a good question. And report back. So, okay, so, and find out what's the official record. It's It, right. it matters in this case, okay. Yeah, yeah, yes. particularly, that was my concern, particularly because this thing happens also every 10 years. In the same way we went, Peggy went and went to look at the binder from 10 years ago. Uh, this won't happen until 10 years from now again so we want to make sure that all the information from this districting is again available next time marilyn you have a comment yeah i guess my comment is given peggy's comment about the minutes that were so um sort of sparse and they you know i guess how important is it i mean if, if that was precedent should this be okay as well So my, my feeling is that um, much of the what much of what happens at this meeting can be very sparse. This motion is, you know, was put forward, it was passed by this. But some of the questions about policy or when we dig into which um, precincts we are doing why or whatever, I think it would be helpful to have some of that recorded um, for the public and just going forward. Why did we just, you know, for example. Um, in 2011, the, somebody on the committee did not want to have a precinct that was solely students. And then they had a discussion and, it, and they, decide, they all decided that was right. But nobody gave any pros or cons. Like, I don't know why they decided that. I have no idea why that was important to anybody. Um, so that, that's the kind of thing I think it would be helpful to have at least a little bit of information recorded so that we know now for the public now and also going forward. So I think since so much of the prior discussion, and I do apologize for not being at, at least, you know, I was only there for an hour, was just sort of discussion of preferences and, you know, what we would like to do, but we didn't have any data in front of us. Right. So it's hard to say, I mean, maybe what we want to do is when it comes to decision making of anything of substance that there be, it be more descriptive so that, you know, the next committee will have a better sense of what the logic and reasoning. Okay. Uh, did you have a yes, simply to add to that point, if you look at the sheet pertaining to your charge, um, it includes what you are to um, uh, end up 
within the completion of this committee submitting. So it has um, some, you know, besides the report, it has to do with the process. And so you're supposed to submit, um, I don't know how detailed it'll be up to this committee, but um, how you came to your decision. So having those notes and of course having the recording uh, will be ultimately, I, I think, important to, you know, your work. Uh, I think that's a great point too, in terms of like, as the town council looks at what the work of this committee or as the public looks at the work of the committee, they want it to be traceable back in terms of like, how did we make decisions and so on? I mean, I don't think that members of the council are gonna watch the videos again. <laughs> But like if we had, I mean, they can, but I mean, if we had those kind of summaries available to the public that would kind of show our thinking during the process and it would also make it more defensible if people have questions or concerns about it. So, so I mean, I think now that we are getting the census data, hopefully we'll talk about that more, the meeting. Hmm. Um, so I think that this is like where it becomes more important. I mean, before we didn't actually have the data, right? So. It, some of them were like kind of pre-discussions about what we would do once we had the data and how we would make decisions. So, so maybe we can just share this with uh, Joseph and tell him mm -hmm. <laughs> moving forward, we can request it. Tell me, you have a comment? I was just gonna say, um, don't, do we need to recognize our new member and, um, yeah. and, show, and show that she's here? Or uh, oh, Absolutely. that's great, thank you. Um, Thank you so for joining Mark us. Angelani joined the meeting five minutes ago. I'm sorry, I didn't introduce her. No, of course not. It's so nice to see you all. Hello. Um, I'm Mehek. Uh, I'm a student at UMass. So Tracy, I hope to see you. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll be a junior this year and I'm just really happy to be here. And I'm a little lost, but I think I'll understand what everyone's talking about soon enough. So, <laughs> yep. Welcome. Thank you. Okay. Um, so to follow up with the agenda that we, um, I had the, but the discussion, I read the minutes from uh, last time. So we want to do, have any comments about the minutes of 8, 11. I'd like to postpone our like discussion and vote on those until the next meeting since okay. I didn't review them before. All in favor? Oh, Aye. Aye. I'm, I can make okay. a motion to that effect, yeah, okay. Okay, somebody wants to second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I do think you Aye. have to do a roll call vote. Okay, but... Marilyn, Dustin? Aye. Uh, Tommy Parks? Aye. Peggy Shannon? Aye. Tracy Safian? Aye. Mahek, Mahek Gilani, do I'm saying it right? Yep, aye. Uh, Irene Ujone, aye. So the motion passes to postpone the discussion of the minutes until next meeting. Okay. Um, do we have any, so the next item in the agenda is public comment. Do we have any attendees? We Mark do and... not. Okay. And Sue did not pass along any public comments from the public to me. So at this point, I do not think we have any public comment. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is our standing um, uh, topic about discussion of rules and regulations, whether we want uh, to change any way we conduct our meeting. And at this point, I don't have anything to bring in up, but if anybody wants to bring up, if not, we'll postpone discussion until next meeting. Tracy? Um, so I get the only thing I would ask is that maybe we could add a agenda item at the beginning just if, for announcements, like if there's any announcements. Okay. So these would be announcements from committee members, for example, or from the committee members voting or non-voting, just because it's not public comment. Like if anybody had any updates that they had heard about. Um, okay. And um, and I did also see language from one of the committees, I think ECAC, they did have language related to how long the public comment periods are. 
So if that becomes a concern with us, if we do start having more public participation that they did adjust their language, they have a public comment period at the beginning of their meetings and the end, but even on the posted agenda, they, they, they have a disclaimer about how long that time can last, you know, with the, because of the rest of the agenda, so. Okay. So I, I think it would be good if you have that one, that comment, that text at hand in case we need to discuss it. So yeah, I can send case. it to you after the meeting. I, do, I just don't have it like with me right now. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. So um, the next item on the agenda was is regarding the constitution regarding the number of precincts. And this is something Sue, Susan Odette was gonna con uh, talk to Paul. Um, she sent me something by email, but I would feel more comfortable postponing until next meeting when she is present in order to clarify any things that might show up. Um, okay. Um, I, it, was this a question of whether we could do, I don't, I don't So remember. the question was related to the charter and section 10.7 that listed oh, yeah. the number of precincts. Okay. And then the discuss part of the discussion was related to a question that we had whether one precinct could be between two districts. So there were two items. Okay. Um, so I would feel more, I would feel more comfortable to discuss it when Susan is here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that yeah. On that second item, though, it I I think I I don't see any practical way, right? That there could no. be. Yeah. No, that one is so we can out, just sort of dismiss table. that. Yes. But I do agree with you that the language of the charter is pretty confusing. Like yeah. so. So but I would prefer that she's here to discuss it. Yep. Okay. Um now we get to the the meat of the meeting. <laughs> it's uh the census data. Um and I think Michael you can read yeah. this in the package. I think the bottom line, and this is one question that I have, and I think probably it's in the mind of everybody, the data came under 40,000. Right. But within 2%, right, of 40,000. So my question is, do we, we're gonna have to adapt precincts, but do we need to create new precincts considering we are under 40,000? And um, my question is, um, who who makes the decision the number of prison? Um, did you have your hand raised? I I do have a question, and since we're we're talking about the the census data, um, when I read the packet for the state, it offered like training workshops to go through the census data has anyone within this body or uh folks within the town taken those workshops that the state has offered pertaining to the census data and redrawing of districts i can i can respond to that d um nothing on the official data we took a workshop in the beginning of april on the estimated data, mm -hmm. um, basically them telling us, oh, you're gonna need 12 precincts best based on the estimated data. Um, and here's how you would do it. And they, mm -hmm. they told us at that point, you can either redraw the district or the precincts yourself, mm -hmm. or you can have the state do it. So it really wasn't a training. It was more of just kind of like an informational session. Um, but the i believe it was in last week's packet mm -hmm. there was an email from the state that i put in there um i'll have to look let me double check yeah where they yeah. they re okay. they reiterated that they were going to be re-delivering maps and re-offering things mm -hmm. um i don't know if i would hold my breath on that because i know that they're going to be drawing these maps for 300 plus cities and towns and um, but it's possible that they would be willing to do that for us. Okay, I'm just interested since they offered, I mm -hmm. wanted to know, you know, had anyone on this body or 
within the town taking it and so so what you're saying there was a preliminary workshop in april that was conducted and it was simply informational correct they and it was only okay. using the estimated data it was uh -huh. using that which was two plus thousand people off you know it said mm -hmm. we were going to have a population of forty one thousand plus and we ended up having thirty nine thousand yeah um so in it ideally at that point in time d we would have had this body in place and you folks would have been able to participate in that even that preliminary meeting but yeah i don't even think you folks were i don't even know what the word is but you folks weren't put in place in your current roles until mm -hmm. what late may early june i think um, it was which, may yeah. which at that point in time the state was no longer doing meetings they were they were completely booked out until august so um okay thank you michael for the clarification i was just wondering as i i went through that back and yeah. ahead. so i think they my understanding and what well, i i'll have to go back and look at that email that i i believe i put in the packet last week they are going to be delivering materials again to us like a preliminary map we will probably choose not to use that but i i will clarify with them whether they are going to offer another training to all of us as a body as well okay thank you Tracy, so I have a related question. So, because um, the final, the updated estimate came in under forty thousand, right? So we can continue to have ten precincts. Is that correct? We don't need to go to fifteen precincts. Technically, yes. What? What? Well, okay, but would you recommend <laughs> that we go to fifteen precincts? Is that what you're saying? I don't know. <laughs> it's. So I can I I don't have a recommendation. Um, right. Of course not. I can yeah. I can I can tell you that <clears throat> when the state looked at our 2010 precincts, I believe um, there was a precinct or two. I'm looking at some data here. Give me just a second. I believe there was a precinct or two that was close to 39. Yeah, precinct one had 39,000 or 3,960 people in it. Precinct four had 3,933 people in it. When we were doing this preliminary review of things with the sense, with the state, they saw those numbers and they said, ooh, that's a big red flag to us. Like you're close to 4,000, you're not there, but you're close to it, which means if there's any development in the next 10 years within that precinct, you're gonna be over that, that 4,000, which is gonna be a big problem, so. Um, I would, so I reached out when I, when I received the final numbers from this, the census bureau and I created, um, when I calculated everything up, I sent an email to the state and I said, we are at 39,263 people. What is your recommendation as the state? Do we still need to increase precincts from 10 to X or can we stay at 10? And I have not heard back from them yet. And I'm sorry, can you just remind me what was our 2010 population? 3,000 or 37,000. Okay. 800 and something. So it wasn't as close. <laughs> so um, it was, is four, I know it was 1,444 people above whatever we are now. <laughs> so, or below. Yeah. Okay. Below. Or below what we are yeah. now. Yeah. Um, because it seems so when you read the charter, um, the charter does in terms of this body, right? The charter says that this body can meet in between the decennial censuses too, like whenever yep. it's felt necessary to do redistricting. Mm -hmm. um, it does seem like a pretty big chain. I mean, the fact that we had received emails from one of the counselors and so on that. And so some people on the council were thinking about like 15 districts or so, um, I mean, I think that might make sense. And I do think Amherst is gonna continue to grow. Um, it's just just to make sure that the people are aware of that, that that is gonna change. So that could be even something that we're putting into the press release, for example, explicitly just so that people understand that it's a bigger change. And we don't really want the council or anybody to be sort of shocked that even though we're under 40,000, that we still wanna go forward mm -hmm. and have 15 precincts. If that's what we decide. Then, so let's Peggy and then Marilyn and then I have a comment. So my, my question is, um, 
Mike, I feel a little bit um, hemmed in here by the state. If we have less than 40,000 people, we could technically do 10 precincts. And then they right. say it's a big red flag because of development. It's like, we can't know what kind of development's gonna happen in five or right. eight years. We, we have an idea what might happen in the next year or two, and they may be quite right that we would then end up going over 4,000. So I appreciate that we should look at that, but there's no way we can really know what would happen longer. And yet, yet they're saying, well, there'll be a big problem. So I, is there really a problem? <laughs> Like, I don't, what would they I do? Don't, I don't know, Peggy, but I can tell you, I believe technically we are under 40,000. We have 10. We can divide precincts up. And as long as we're in plus or five, plus, as long as we're under 4,000, plus or minus 5% of each other, and we are not dividing up any communal groups of people, we could probably squeak by. Um, but um, I don't know, did any, I don't, uh, maybe I should share my screen, but I don't want to completely derail things. But if uh, there was a, there was an agenda item added, um, Irina put it together today, that was the 2010 population per precinct compared to the 2020 population. And if you look at precinct 10, in 2010, it had 3,705 people. Now it has 5,446. Mm -hmm. So that is a huge jump in people, um, which it there wasn't any development there. It was just the way that people were counted in that area. But um, if there is a, a brand new big development within, let's say, five years from now within a precinct, you could have an imbalance like that. Um, okay. And it's just it's just something to consider. But I believe technically, Peggy, that we because we're under 40, we could probably squeak by as long as we're under 4,000 per precinct and plus or minus 5%. Okay, uh, learning. So I guess my point is, you know, the, the two precincts that had the red flags, they actually decreased in size. So um, it's, it's, I think, you know, it's just so hard to predict where we're gonna be that I would, I think it might be simpler just to go with the 10 but that's, you know, that's my opinion, rather than trying to increase to 15. Okay, um, me, Tracy and Tammy. Um, so my concern is looking at the map that if we go to 15, there's one census block that has 2,512, right? So that's right. essentially um, one census block that would be a precinct. And Correct. part of the idea was to have a diverse, as I think part of, at least this is what's discussed in the, the previous, and this is something that we should be discussing, but in the previous um, district, in, they made an effort so that not one person was only students. So there was a combination of students and um, year round. And if we go to, 15 persons, we're going to find ourselves more and more in that situation that we have persons that are only students, because it would be if we have to find the 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 combination and continuity and census blocks and things, we're going to find some that are, we're going to have several persons that are only students. We could manage it maybe by combining in districts so that then they will rebalance using districts, but we're going to have a big imbalance. We're going to have some persons that is year round for residents and some other students, only students, when if we go to 15. Um, just by looking at the numbers of the maps that they came up. Um, that's my so Tracy, then Tammy, and then Peggy. I think Tammy had her hand up before me, so I'd like to hear what she has to say. Okay. Thanks. So um, I was just looking at the numbers as well. and. Is the goal to be under 3,800, under the 5%? Because like you were saying, um, five of the precincts in 2010 were over 38. And one, two, three, four, five, six in 2020 are over 38 or 4,000, four over 4,000 and two over 38. So it seems to me that we're very 
close to needing um, those additional uh, precincts. Um, but I, I have a, um, the other question I have is the districts. So if we, it's either five districts. So town council doesn't want to do 12 precincts and six counselors. We want to do five counselors and 15 precincts. Is that a My my understanding is that if we did six districts, there should be a charter commission to change the distribution mm -hmm. of the councillors, because then would be uh, only one councillor at large. Yeah, we would. Or that they would have to grow the council. council. They would have oh, they to have expand to the council to fifteen people. Either they have to expand something. the council to fifteen, or they have. Um, because in the charter says there are five districts. Right, but is, the, is there a problem with having six? You were saying they need to change the charter. Yeah. Is there a problem with them changing the charter? I think it has to be a state, uh, a, a, an act of legislation, an act of state legislation. I could be completely wrong there. Sue's not here. Sue would be the one that needs to know that or that would know that. Um, okay, so it's between having 10 being very full 10 or moving to 15, a very low number at 15. That is very hard to balance. And then I would assume that if you're gonna do that low number at 15, then you would have combined polling places. Right. Because you don't have 15 polling places. In some locations where there's sufficient space, you could have combined polling places, just like we have now at the high school. Um, okay. I was just trying to get a scope of what we're doing. So we're not going to go I, six precincts. We're doing I, five. It's between I, 10 and 15. I mean, so, we, could, we could ask with the council. I mean, I it is because it is in the charter, it's pretty involved to change the charter, yeah. which actually is a really good question. And that was a question that we had had that came up earlier in the agenda about the precincts about, because the charter also talks about 10 precincts. So is that something that's, you know, like the letter of the charter, and we can't alter that to be, um, you know, 12 precincts or 15 precincts. And if that, if that's stuck in the charter, then a change to the charter is a change to the charter. So it is possible that you could go to six districts. You know, if you're going to change the number of precincts, is it a big deal to change the number of precincts? I don't know. I mean, if you're going to change the number of precincts, is it a big deal to change the number of districts? I guess I had the idea that that was a thought because then you could have um, one of the counselors representing students in the town. So there would be someone on the council who was a student or represented student. Yeah, I mean, it's possible that even to change the number of the precincts would also involve sort of the same procedure. If it is stuck in the charter that you have to have the 10 precincts, then yeah, I mean, I think that's a good point. We would just have to find out how involved that is to make any kind of edits to the charter. And I do think that some types of changes, they do probably need to go all the way to the state house and be approved at the state level. And we may not have the time for that at this, in this process. Um, but my comment, my question was actually um, back to what Mike was mentioning about, you know, if we compare the 2010 population to the 2020 population and that so much of the growth, like, over half of the growth is, or more than half, almost all the growth is in Precinct 10, yet we haven't seen any new development in Precinct 10. So my question is now that the census has released these quote final numbers, how final are they? Like in terms of, is somebody gonna come back and say, like our town's gonna be editing these figures or telling the census that they need to be edited. So we believe that that's actually I know that, you know, the maps got edited like after the DAB's work last time, but did the numbers all stay the same? The numbers stayed the same. People just were moved around Tracy, I believe last time. Um, so this final number that we have, the 39,000 number is like the number. It should be the number. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it seems weird that that Precinct 10 grew so much, <laughs> for example. Yeah. So, so Precinct 10 is 
basically the southwest dorm, the southwest area of UMass. Um, right. And Plus a, a few neighborhoods, area. right? Yeah. Right, right. So um, I had it, questions about this as well. Um, isn't that the, where the Commons, uh, the Honors College is? Yeah. Yes, it is. That's new development. Yeah, yeah. so that's what I said, the new development is the Honors College. Oh no, the Honors College is not in Precinct 10, I don't think. I don't think it goes all the way there. Are you talking about the Honors College across from, like on across from the Mullen Center? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. yeah. That's not, Precinct 10 ends before that. Do you want me to pull the I, map? Can you pull the map? Yeah. I, I, th I thought that Precinct 10 probably ended at um, Massachusetts Avenue. Well, it is on Massachusetts Avenue, so it's, question of whether it's in which side of Mass Ave. But one one thing is those new dorms, are those honor storms too, the ones that they're building at the corner of Lincoln and Massachusetts, Mass Ave? Is that graduate student housing? I don't know. No. Well, so, so it, it's replacing the Lincoln apartments and then. No, but there's nobody there. Um... But there were, there was in the last census. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so this is this is Massachusetts Avenue here. You know, uh, yeah. this is University Drive. This is the area right here where there was a, a very high concentration of people. Um, right, so- um, So this what, is Prince House, Crampton House, McKimmy, McKimmy House, John Adams House and Patterson House. Yeah, they're the here. different towers. And yeah. each tower is separate. Then, so Mike, if you move it to the right, and then there's like the Lincoln Apartments, mm -hmm. um, apartments. just yeah, to the right, yeah, with your that's mouse. Right here. And then, okay, but that's going away. But then I believe that they're well, they're building and replacing that as well as they're using part of this lot that goes to the north. Correct. So right is here. that still in the same um, precinct? Uh, let's or, look. So I don't, different? first of all, let me show you guys. I don't know if you folks saw this, but over here on the right-hand side on the DAB page, there's an oh. interactive map. Oh, nice. Thanks, um, Mike. We, awesome. we could not, we could, we could not put that in, in the um, map packet. Um, so go to resources, click on interactive map here. Anybody in the public can do this as well. And this takes them to an interactive version of the PDF map that I put, put in. You can zoom in. Um, and click can, on the polygons, right? You can so you click can see on the, the date on the polygon. You can yeah, click awesome. on the polygon, and these these fields that pop up, these rows here, these are the population numbers, and they're coded by the Census Bureau. I didn't feel comfortable editing those, um, but I provided another document that shows what each one of these codes means. This is total population right here. This P one zero 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 one. Oh, I so see. there are 2,512 people counted within this census block right here. Um, this value right here is people that were counted as one race. This is people that identified as white. This is people who identified, I believe, as Black or African American, and then so on and so forth. Um, so there's another document in the packet that is that refers to what each one of these codes mean. Great, that's um, awesome. So, um, so that's at you folks can go in there. I do want while I'm here, I do want to show you a problem, and I found at least three of these problems already. It shows that there are 412 people on the Berkshire Dining Hall. I don't <laughs> think that's the true. I think they're actually on the Moore House. Yes. Um, and I found at least three examples of this on college campuses when I was looking around. So when, we, when we're when we drawing boundaries, we need to be conscious of things like that. Um, I hope are, that that's not you... the case in residential neighborhoods, but I'm betting it's more of a problem on college campuses. Um, so you're keeping like a master list of all those like edits or something? Yes, yes. And I'm gonna reach out directly to the Census Bureau about, about those anomalies that I'm finding. Thank you for so, finding those. Yeah. Um, so, go ahead. Uh, yeah, okay. Now I want to be respectful. There's uh, several hands up. Um, Marlene, Peggy, and D, you had your hand raised before? I do. Yeah, uh, I mean, yes. Um, 
So why don't we start with this since she hasn't talked yet and then we continue with Marlene and Peggy. That's okay? Okay. So all I was um, wanted to know was that there are some areas that are indicated in the census as underreported. How uh, will the committee uh, account for those numbers, meaning that they're assuming that certain areas, apartment complexes, et cetera, that the data is not fully accounting for people who live there. Um, is there any way in which to look at those areas and account for these underreported areas? And should we take counsel from the state on that? Do you know what I'm talking about? That there, within the census data, there's um, areas that they're indicating this is a, um, a, a what a typical or a location that uh, they suspect is underreporting population. Any thoughts on that, and how should this if, committee account for it? Is there a way of overlaying the information from? the underreporting area to the information that we have to pinpoint on the map to make sure to see where which precinct yeah mike so is that a g are those linked to the geography like the shape files for those areas so i guess my first question is and i've heard the same thing d but i don't i don't know enough about the details so I believe one of the major areas of of concern for underreporting is college students who live off campus. Um, because my understanding is the methodology for on campus was one way, but people who are off campus were treated just like, you know, anybody who owns a single family home or, or an apartment building or a two family home in Amherst where you know you fill out the paperwork that you received in the mailbox or online. Um, so the only method that I could think of would be to compare, are there places where the numbers are drastically different from 2010 to now in apartment complexes? And in those places, we look to see what the difference is. Um, okay. I think it would impact uh, minority, uh, majority districts as well, particularly for folks living in apartment complexes. So. That's, you know, students are definitely a concern, but also, um, you know, ensuring that that's a balance as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. But how would, did they have any suggestions how to go about? I, I, I would like if somehow, you know, and I know you've already done so much, Mike, um, but if there's a way to have, I don't know, a spreadsheet of that or um, include it somehow within the interactive map, something to indicate as uh, the board is trying to, you know, get their <laughs> heads wrapped around uh, who lives where and how many and how many to predict in the future, et cetera, um, that that's also a consideration. My concern is that places like Colonial Village, mm -hmm. um, other apartments, um, mm -hmm. that folks will be undercounted and missed. And in, in, in reading the charge, both from the state and from the town, um, these are section on uh, my majority um, you know districts uh, the, the uh, for, that folks have a voice Great. can you repeat that because I, I at least I did put that here. oh on um, in the state so sorry state and um, then the the town part of the charge is to make sure the minority majority um, balance occurs did you all just lose me yeah you chopped you blocked out for just a second 
Okay, yeah, I think someone else in my household. (laughs) Okay, good. (laughs) All right. Too many people on the internet. Right. So, D, I just. So, that's all. It's just something to keep in mind. This is a great example, D, because Colonial Village, it hasn't really grown. It hasn't changed in 10 years, right? It's been, the buildings have been the same. um, But. What I have here, and I'm showing on this map that I zoomed to really quickly, this is Colonial Village. Let me turn on the streets here. Um, This is Route 9, Belchertown Road. This is Southeast Street. The purple number here is the number of people within this census block in 2010. The orange number is the number of people here in 2020. And what you see here is a decrease in 45 people, 46 people. that is an example of, hey, there's 46 people there that, oh, look, there's 10. There's, there's, a, there's a slight variance in geography here mm-hmm. uh, between 2010 and 2020. There's 10 people here. So there's, there is a slight miscount. Uh, this would be an example of doing what I was saying in comparing for these apartment complexes, comparing 2010 to now to see if there are any dramatic differences in the balance of people, regardless of whether they're a student or not, or regardless of their race, just to look purely at the, at the difference in count. And if we right. see an apartment complex that was here in 2010, and also here in 2020, and there's a big difference between the two, then we could say, hey, there's an underrepresented group of people here. There's an uncounted group of people and they would, it would just purely be looking at numbers. So that is one thing that we could do. Okay. Thank you for that, Mike. Yeah. Mike, I I have a question. Could we have access to this map? Because I find it interesting that just across the road, there is also a big difference. The the difference across the road is a hundred people. That one. Um, but this one, look, uh, Oh gosh, you guys, we're getting into the weeds. <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah. Um, no, yeah, I know. But the so question look, is- so you see me flashing this this yes. this census block. This is the census block in 2010 that I'm flashing here, okay? But in yes. 2020, there's a dividing line between it. Oh, and okay, so it's okay. 92 plus 86. Plus 86. Okay. Right, right. Okay. So so that's why it's really hard to compare 2010 to 2020 because the geography of everything changes. Um, but we can do our best. We can okay. do our best to compare numbers. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. So uh, Marlene, Peggy, and then Tracy. So I guess one comment I have, and we've already sort of gone through this, but at what point during this 10 years would it make a difference if we either underestimate or overestimate population? Because when you look at, you know, the state's concern about two of those precincts, what happened was they went down in population. So you would anticipate growth or lack thereof during a 10-year period. At what point does it become critical if you go over or way under? Good question. I think, I think 10 years from now. When you have to redraw the, di- the the districts again, as is when it becomes critical. Um, but in in the meantime, you know, there's there's an imbalance of people. You know, if there's a massive development in one of these precincts, uh-huh. there's just a really big imbalance of people, like we well, see here. Well, that that one, the mass ab development, right? It has 600 beds, I think. Right. Doesn't it? So that's probably like yeah. one of the biggest new projects in Amherst, and that will happen within right. the next 10 years. By the way, I, I, do, I know that there are other questions here, but this was a question um, on this interactive map that in, all of you folks can see. When you get here, you can click on this button over here on the left. It's a layer and you can turn on voting precincts and you can turn on voting districts so that you can see those boundaries. So. Uh, Peggy. Okay, I have a couple comments. My first comment is about the charter, although I think that getting the charter changed, if necessary, to allow for more than 10 precincts is probably not difficult. I think to get to change um, the number of districts 
would be a huge deal. Um, the charter, you know, went through a huge voting process when they first brought it in, and it was all designed to have 13 councillors, two from each district, and so on. You want to change that structure, that is not going to be something that we can just kind of slip through um, the town or the legislature. Um, but my other comment is actually sort of a more question or a comment. When we think about the precincts, um, I'm not sure why there's a problem of having a precinct which is just students. I think there could be a problem with having a district of just students, but the precincts are the building blocks to the districts. If that's, you know, I, I don't understand why that is problematic. And, and I guess my question for Mike, if Mike is the right one is, um, in terms of making sure that we don't dilute minority vote, for example, do we have to worry about that for precincts as well or just districts because it's the it's at the district level that representation actually happens. I don't I'm not 100% sure, but I believe if we go back and we review the um, presentation the state presented, I believe it's both it's both precincts and districts where you do not want to dilute any any sort of community vote um but i i'm not i think we should go back and review documentation on that okay but it is also i mean i remember when i looked at the 2011 district advisory board um that they kept referring it to wards and not districts which is the language that the state uses correct and right so the wards to peggy's point the wards are now the districts, as we're referring to them as the districts, are the building blocks. So, um, I mean, that seems particularly crucial, like unless we're changing those blocks by <laughs> by adding additional districts or anything. Um, I mean, I did have a question, just I think you were talking about this last time, Mike, but, you know, as we talk about new developments or, um, you know, or underrepresented populations and things like in terms of like how strict is the state about that they want all the, the districts to be within like five, um, the sorry, the precincts to be within 5% population of each other, right? Because if we start, they're not going to, in terms of the state's determination of that 5%, they're not going to be looking at the future development or the underrepresented right populations and things are just going to be doing it quantitatively based on the numbers that they have, which are the best available currently. And so, I mean, does the state ever get upset with um, municipalities who, if there are some that are more than 5% difference or does that come up as an issue, I guess? I don't think they're going to let us go above plus or minus 5%. I don't think they're going to let us, they're not going to let us go above 4,000 people in a precinct and they're not going to let us go above plus or minus 5% in a precinct or a district. So, um, Mike, I so, have a question about the plus or minus 5%. Is it plus mm -hmm. or minus 5% or 5% difference between two precincts? Because one it gives you the difference 10% between, mm -hmm. if you will do plus 5, minus 5 is 10%. Uh, if, you, right. if you do 5% difference is half of that. So right now. my understanding is 5% difference between the upper and the lower limit. Am I correct? Is is that I don't know that actually. That's a great question. Um, I think they have to be within five percent. That means it's plus or right. minus two point five. So two and a half 5%. percent. Yeah, yeah. We'll have to look at the state at the states. Um, go back here. So, Irene, are you yes. and, and Sue corresponding with the state for these no. clarifications? No, but I, no, but I think we, we have to, I think that was part of my, one of my questions originally this morning, uh, today, this afternoon is all these questions that we're having because we are so close to the 40,000 is who makes the final determination can, about the, the, the number of Precincts since we are under 40,000. Can we say we are staying with 10 or the state is going to come back to us? Or this, that's one of the, that was a question I had today and I was hoping. It, um, but so I think we have to start asking the state about these questions. So it would because be helpful, yeah, to have a, a running list, you know, yes. to send a, a correspondence as the chair to the state 
and I think that would be appropriate as as yeah. the board chair to send that correspondence on behalf of yeah. the the group. Yes, I, I I agree, but I didn't want to. I, I wanted to hear from the the, the group trying to figure out sure whether so we have to. Say. Yeah, this is the language in the standards. Every precinct's population must be within five percent of the average precinct population for that ward or town. Oh. So the wards of the districts. Every precinct's population must be within five percent of the average precinct population for that ward or town. So that means it's plus or minus five percent. Yeah. That's yeah. Plus, five, plus five percent or minus five percent. From right. the average. Yeah. From the average. From the that's average. the way yeah. that's the way that I interpreted it. Yes. Yes. So so I recall that, you know, the question about the 12 precincts and then 15 precincts, like it came up right because the officials from the state had contacted the town, like town leadership, mm -hmm. maybe the town manager and whoever else was on that correspondence mm -hmm. and had, and I guess Sue had been on that correspondence and indicated that, you know, based on their preliminary estimates that they thought that we were going to need at least 12 precincts. Right. right, and then the yeah. town decided to say, okay, well, that should be 15. Um, but has, I, 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 I agree that it would be important for us to know, like, if it's even acceptable to the state if we continue to have 10, or is that not even an option? So I did reach out to them to ask them that question um, the day that the census numbers came out, and I got the total, and I received the total. Um, you know, I took the 39,263, you know, divided by 10, that's 3,926 people per precinct if you average it out and then plus or minus 5%, plus 5%, that's above 4,000, right. minus yeah. 5%, that's 3,729. Um, I reached out to the state with those numbers and said, hey, are you still recommending that we go to 12? Can we stay at 10? And I have not heard back from them yet. So can you ping back? Can you resend it? I can ping I can ping them again, yeah. Or if you forward me the your email, I can send it as sure. um although maybe coming from a dot gov email address is better than coming from yeah. And I know, email. I mean I'm sure our elected officials are interested in this too. Mm -hmm. Like I know um anyway. I wonder if they might get be able to get answers when we can't get answers. <laughs> Yeah, but. I know that this state is currently, you know, at least for us, the estimated data was so far off, you know, 2,500 people off. That's the state had, Yeah, the, the state had been blasting forward with 300 plus towns with these est with the estimated, data, oh, okay. the estimated data. Now they are completely like scaling back and having to rerun maps and metrics for all 351 cities and towns. You know the data came out less than a week ago, so I know that they're in in um, they're just cranking out maps and stuff right now. But I will follow up with the the person that I reach out to, and uh, Irina, I can share that per the the people's information with you so that you can reach out to them as committee chair. Oh, well, can you see me on the email as committee chair? Yes. I think it's yes. better than leave from a dot gov right uh, email address and would see me. Yep. Thank you. Um, Marilyn, you have your other hand raised. I do. I have a question. So in the standards, it said no precinct may contain more than 4,000 residents. If that's etched in stone, we don't have a lot of leeway in some of these. It's, it's you know, if you look at the average precinct size, that would be 3,927. 3, so that gives us a buffer of only 73 if we cannot exceed the 4,000. And I don't know, you know, that's, a, I think that's a challenging task or maybe a challenging task. If, you know, I, as I look at precinct 10, we would have to reduce that by 1500 or close to 1500, right 1446. Yeah. Tommy and then Mahek. So. I don't know if you can see my numbers, but I, what I did was a plus and minus in each of the precincts. And there, two of them have less than a hundred in difference in population, which means eight precincts 
have a difference of more than 100 people go backwards or forwards. And so there's so little wiggle room there that if, it, if it's really, I mean, if the um, precinct number were uh, 3,900, you know, you have this wiggle room of 100 people. I don't know how we're going to, no. you know, do those district lines if we're talking about 100 people. And so I'm just, when I look at this, it's, it, it seems like we're going, it's not going to be possible because if you, if you're at 39, which is the average number per precinct, what is 5% within that? You can't go above it really. Right. And so how are you going to fit those, uh, you know, true. Tell me, but that's 700 people. Anyway, but that's going to happen anyhow when we go, if we go to 15 precincts, we're going to have the same problem because then the number is 2,700 as an average, plus or minus 130. So the wiggle room um, is also very much reduced because our mm -hmm. average per precinct goes down considerable. It goes by 50% down, right? Right, but your wiggle room is on both sides instead of just one direction. Right. Yeah, but the wiggle room is much smaller. So yeah, it's right. not that we are gaining. So it might be easier to have a big, when you have a bigger number, it's easier to accommodate because the numbers might be bigger. You, I think, um, I think we go, we, Tracy, you had the numbers, it's 2,700, right? The average, we can do it quickly. Um, yeah, I mean, I had to calculate it before when our estimate was like 41. Thousand yeah. and it was twenty eight hundred at that time. So, so, so I'm, I'm sure it's about twenty seven hundred. Yeah, like right. If you go to, so I have a I have a calculator here. So what yeah. are, what precinct number are we talking about? So, so how many we, it would be twenty six hundred. It would be closer to twenty six hundred. Yeah. Six hundred, and then yeah. five percent of that is one hundred and thirty. Thirty, right? right. Yeah. 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 So then right. we we have to be within two hundred and seventy plus or minus. True. Uh, 270 right. plus or minus difference between the high up and the lower down. Whereas in this situ in the other situation, so we will have um, um, we would have 270. So in one case we have 270, so 280 total wiggle up between up and down. And in the other case, we have slightly smaller, 230, uh -huh. right? Because 5% uh, of 3,922 is 196. So that's our 5%. Right. So and then of, of 15, it's 130 or 131. Yes. So. With 15 precincts, our 5% variance is 130. The other one is 196. OK. okay. It's true that down, we can only go 5% down. But up, we can only go 2%. Um, I think Mahek has her hand up. Yeah, so I was just going to elaborate on what uh, Tammy and Marilyn were saying about the lack of uh, wiggle room, because what I've noticed as a UMass student is that UMass is also accepting a lot of freshmen, sometimes even more than um, the limit that they're allowed to, which is why the population, I believe, will be increasing. At least I can speak from the UMass perspective. Um, that So... Uh, what I'm trying to say is that I think I also agree with increasing the number of precincts because uh, just a difference of 100 people would be too big of a risk to take for the next 10 years. Okay. Marilyn, you have your hands up. Yeah, you you Actually, my hand was down, but I mean, I it wasn't lowered. But <laughs> oh, yeah. my question before, my prior question was, so at what point during this 10 year period does it become a problem? You know, obviously we, re we, re we redo the census every 10 years because there are changes in population. So if in five years or six years, the population go grows to say 42,000, are we in violation or do we have to and there's no formal census then. So how do we, how does anyone even know? So we're able to meet, well, the body is able to, to meet, even though it's an ad hoc committee. 
um, to redraw it when necessary. So that might be an option. Um, the other option is to, you know, when you look at the state charge, it says to include uh, within your decision making um, communities of interest, building projects, um, you know, et cetera. And I believe last week you all mentioned that there are some building projects that are uh, going on now, and then there are those that are planned for the future. Um, I had put a request to Mike, and again, I know you're juggling a lot, but to find out from um, the, uh, the town uh, folks, I forget which offices, okay, this development, etc., uh, which ones are in the pipeline. And that might help in this board's decision making process. What are currently um, uh, okayed, you know, and have been approved, and then what are potentially in the pipeline? I do not have an answer there yet. I've, I, I populated the spreadsheet with the three that I knew the answer to, um, but I do not have a complete list of the status of the projects yet. But I'm, I'm reaching out constantly to the to the group to get that information. So I hope I maybe I'll have an answer for you. I'll go knock on people's doors tomorrow, try to get an answer. Okay, have a, you have your hand raised? Yeah, I do. So I want to second what Dee just said about taking into account the um, the the known developments, um, but I'm wondering it, neither one is a very appealing prospect. Either keeping ten districts, uh, sorry, ten precincts, or moving up to fifteen. They both have their problems um, from a number point of view, and who knows whether there'll be problems from actually when we try to draw the lines. So I'm going to suggest that we just fool with it that we all of us use Mike's interactive map and start playing around with things to see well if we were going to do it with 10 district 10 precincts what would it look like oh if it you know maybe it, that may not even be possible given the numbers um, particularly in precinct 10 or if we're going to do 15 where would we start thinking about drawing those lines so I just um, either 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 route has some problems and we don't even know what they are yet until we start drawing lines. Um, I, just, I just wanted to point out that, you know, for 2020, um, we are 737 people away from 40,000. And then, um, you know, we had this, um, these uh, new um, apartments that are being built. So I don't know what the population of those is, but I forgot about them. And I, I know once you add them to the number, we're going to get much closer. I don't know if it's close to 700. So Mike, you said you would look into that. Well, like, for example, that Tammy, that one on um, Mass, Mass Ave, Ave, the one that you Mass is building, that's 600 beds right there. I mean, okay. so that's just one development and though it is replacing in part some of the housing that's going offline, the net is still pretty large. It's still several hundred. So it's probably at least just half of the 700 that you said that we have for wiggle room. I mean, I do like the idea of playing around with the maps a little and I think we need a few more answers like in terms of Again, like would the state even allow us to have 10 districts and things like that? Um, so, I mean, perhaps, I mean, one thing I was wondering if maybe like the next meeting, hopefully we'll have more um, answers on those questions and then we could, we could move forward with deciding, you know, if we want to look at more at 10 or at 15. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess the question too is like, is 12 or, you know, the idea that had come up with changing the numbers precincts, is that something that we just need to like get rid of because it's completely unfeasible? I mean, Peggy brought up really good points, but until we've heard more about the limitations with the charter and changing the charter, uh, and I would like to hear a little more because that is also to me an attractive so, possibility if it's possible. So I think that the charter might not be possible. I also thought it was like hooking with the idea of having 15 
five districts and not six, six it's easier to divide when you have 13. So I was like, why five and should have been six with 13 is easier. But the charter was, I pull up the charter and says section 2.1, composition, term of office and eligibility. And here it says 13 members, three at large, uh, 10 from the districts, two councillors to be elected from each of five districts of town. So if we were even to propose that to distribute differently councillors, it has to be changed in the, in the charter. That's the first article on the charter. Um, B? So I, I hear what you're saying, but just because it's, it's written, <laughs> there's lots of contracts and documents yeah. within the town that are amended um, all the time. So, you know, I, I do hear what everyone is saying that it would be difficult, but it's not impossible. And usually what happens, you submit the, once it's approved on the town level within the council, we submit a proposal. If they see there's a need, they vote on it. Then it goes to the state as a copy to be voted on. So. It, you know, I don't see it as impossible, but it is something to investigate as to what the process is, because if that's what's best for the the voters um, and and best in terms of the the precinct and the the districts, then you know uh, you should proceed with it. I you know, feeling as a resident, but I think it is in, uh, to explore the process before ruling it out. Yeah, I think that that was the point I was trying to make just to, okay. but hopefully, I mean, we, hopefully it wouldn't take us too many weeks to get some of those answers. I think I, I would like, I think it, it's interesting and I think we have to figure out which way or who to ask what would be the process. But if we were to propose this, I think it has to be substantiated with data saying 15 is not feasible. They're so small that 15 is not feasible. I think uh, before going saying, hey, we want 12 because it's easier, it would be saying with 15, it's not possible to have a balance distribution on the precincts and making the districts. I think I would feel more comfortable uh, pushing forward with this if we say the data is saying with 12. I don't know if everybody agrees. I think I, it, I, it, I totally agree with you. I don't think that we could sell um, trying to change the charter um, if we can without just by saying, you know, 12 is an easier number than 15. Yeah, I, it has to be, we cannot do it with 15. It's too small. The variability is too small. We cannot, the new complex would have to be divided into three census blocks so that we have a balance. So how do we go about that? Uh, and I agree for any of the things that you all are undertaking, it's going to be, you know, met with a, a large degree of scrutiny. So you're going to have to have the data no matter what. Yeah. I'm just saying that if that's the conclusion this board comes to, I feel that you need to find out the procedure in case that's what the board comes to. That's that's all I'm saying. Yeah. I'm not saying to to you know just propose it and not have any reasoning or uh, you know quantitative and qualitative reasons for backing it up. But uh, it is something to find out what would be the the likely procedure. That's all. I, I agree. I can follow up and try to ask, um, or somebody wants to follow up and ask. Uh, I mean, you so know question. Who so questions about the charter like this, who, I mean, to whom do we go for the answers, I guess? I think like it who, should be maybe legal through, 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 should we, do we have to ask legal advice? Or I would agree. I would, I would agree that it should go to Sue and then Sue would reach out to legal. So. Or I mean, or even maybe um, ask the town manager, you know, that we could right. contact Sue. I mean, I could send an email to that effect. 
i would draft i would recommend drafting these questions in in an email and then writing and then cc like maybe emailing sue and and paul right um and i wish sue were here she would have a better answer um, but i think i mean but sue herself was sort of reading through the charter i mean she doesn't work with the charter the details of the charter a lot you know it also seems like something it would that people on the council might have feelings about it as well. I mean, the, the council does have their meeting on the 23rd. And so but, I'm happy to I draft, think, I'm happy to draft sort of just. Um, Tracy, I don't think this is a question that the, the council should answer. This is something that the government is, should be independent. No, of, of course, of, of course. Counselors. The reason I'm just mentioning with the councilors is just knowing the council members I d just that people on the council have pretty strong opinions about things. And so the idea that, you know, we come up with recommendations and then, you know, towards the end of a process and then we're moving them to the council. Like if, if there was a proposal such as changing the number of districts, I think it would be better to at least inform the council sooner that that was one of the options than to put it in in October when we want the council to approve it in like one or two meetings. Do you know what I mean? I mean so um not and find out not, right and, and find example, out the I mean, procedure right and yeah. i think that i mean and i think you know for example like paul bachelman at each council meeting right he prepares a report for the meeting so for example this would be a great opportunity for him to mention to the council members that the our committee has started meeting you know and the population came in just under forty thousand. um you know, and one of the things that the the committee has discussed is this possibility of the six di six districts. Or, I mean, that's something that probably needs to change. Like, it sounds like we are super close to the ten precincts, so it doesn't. I don't even know if that's like an option, really. From what everybody's saying, I mean, Amherst will continue to grow. We are like really close. We could convene a second district advisory board you know in a few years but that, that's a lot of work too and logistically does that even work um so i mean just thinking ahead it seems that that may not be the best way to go but but i think that we do need some answers and i mean if it's helpful i can i can just draft a very short email just asking the town clerk and the town manager you know, to, because we're trying to get some answers on this. Right, and it has to be documented in terms mm -hmm. of what the procedure, they should have that written down somewhere. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thanks, uh, Tracy. So if you can CC me, so then I, we keep it in record and we will we'll Yeah, of course. I out. mean, or I guess is it, it's not a... Um, no, it's not, it's not like in a violation of open meeting law if I run the email by like yourself and your co-chair Peggy or something as long as it's like not a majority of our committee. Yeah. I would feel comfortable just having somebody check and make sure that I'm asking the right questions and doing so in a um, way that, you know, is going to be clear what we're asking. Okay. Test it with me or with Peggy. With yeah. me. So, Paul, I mean, my understanding is the town manager is on vacation this week. Um, so I would probably email him while it's tough. I'm assuming he's on vacation this week, but maybe he'll actually check his emails on Saturday or Sunday or something. So there is a town council meeting on Monday. Um, he does. So he'll I would, check, he'll check I would his email. email him before the end of the week. And hopefully it can be again, maybe it could be something that he could mention too you know, in his uh, town manager updates. If he has any questions, so. Okay, great. Uh, Tammy, you have uh, your hands up? Um, yeah, I was just trying to figure out the district slash ward, how many people are, are in each of those and if they look relatively equal. So I'm just doing the math on that. I, I didn't know if, um, um, Michael had it, um, you know, something that you could have quick access to. Did I not do that? I meant to do that for you guys. No, if, I, if I, I, think it, I, I did that and I think there, at least I was doing it quickly and there's a uh, big differences in particularly the one that includes the um, person. Ten. Okay. Uh, that, that one. So I was trying to figure out whether, okay, can we, 
because this is going to be a decision that we're going to have to make. Uh, can we keep it them the same as close as possible? We start completely anew. And I think if you look at the discussions uh, from when they created the charter and previously they were part of the goal, the last district thing, correct me if I'm wrong, was they try to keep the, the precincts as close as possible as in the past. I would like to see the demographics on uh, yeah, the data before, uh, if we're going to start making going to 15 or to 12, I would like to see the demographics so, so that we make sure um, that we are not disenfranchising since populations have changed so much that we are doing it in the right way. And, um, yeah, Tracy, I also, have, I, yeah, Peggy, yes. I yeah. also looked at the numbers and really um, districts one, two, and four are all quite close to each other, easily within a 5% range, but three and five are way off. Three is the one that's, um, it's a thousand people too high and five is a thousand people too low. So, and they are not next to each other. So we can't just kind of easily take some of the people in three and pop them over to five. We'd have to move them say to four and then move some people from four to five or something like that. So um, it, it, yeah, that's just, it's not, it's not falling easily into our laps. Well, and I think also I had mentioned at the last meeting, right, that when I went back to how the Charter Commission created the districts, that they're, you know, basically because they, as Peggy, as you were saying, they have to be next to each, each other, the two um, precincts in each district have to be next to each other. There were only a total of like nine possible configurations that would work for Amherst. And there was one that the Charter Commission ultimately voted for, but there were some others that I think um, that the they have similar benefits and um, and perhaps they would have they definitely would consider they would be worth looking at again, I think. So I it didn't seem like it was a to me when I look back at their analysis, it it didn't stand out to me that the distribution that they chose from the precincts to the districts was like the only good option. I think there were some other good options too, like in terms of the, in terms of having communities, you know, this subtown communities like clustered together and so on. Um, and so district three is precinct four and precinct 10. Yes. So that's why they're over because, because right. 10 shot up so much. Um, and that's my, that's my, um, that's my district and that's also Joseph's district, so. Uh, These are the numbers I came up with just by calculating yeah. things in the spreadsheet. Okay. Uh, so Mike, I have a question because by looking at the numbers, um, well, this goes back about the undercounting. Um, I was looking at the numbers and by the color coding on precinct one, and it seems there are some areas that are undercounted. Um, mm. Like the, maybe because of the timing, I'm thinking, um, it looks many areas look, um, and this is predominantly a student rental area. Mm -hmm. Uh, but there's nothing we can do or do about these things, right? Only that to take into account when we are distributing, knowing that there there might be. I mean, I think we should consider it. I, I don't think we should completely throw it out. That would be this would be an example of something yeah. where I think we should compare it to. Do you have an example, Irina, of uh, a particular block? Like we're looking at an interactive map. Do you want so, to? So, for example, the Coles, uh, the so particularly um, the Coles property right here. The the what's the name of the North Village? Yeah, it's no, North. That, yeah, it's, it's right here. Uh, is that one? Yeah. Isn't it the mill district? The mill district. Right. Yeah. So this this is um the mill district. This right? is this right here that I've highlighted. This is one big census block and it says that there are 169 people there. Aren't there like 70 units in each building? I think 70 rental units in each building, so that would be 100 yeah. and, assuming that there's one person, that would be 140 
Plus, I mean, a lot of this stuff is commercial around here, but there, I believe there are some residential properties yeah, there are residential, here. So you can see them on the map. But not all of those were occupied by April 2020, yeah, that, were they? Can... I mean, the governor came out to like a big opening like later in the spring. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. So I right. think that they're all being filled in now, <laughs> but they weren't, would have all, yeah, yeah. might not okay, have been maybe. accounted for in April. But also, yeah, so they, they, there's, okay, this is going into the details. There is a lot of in Pafton and, um, um, no, it's it's definitely something to be conscious of. Dee mentioned it earlier. Um, yeah. And if you go and you read any sort of literature online about, you know, undercounting in this census, it it's predominantly uh, for most of it is students who live off campus um, because students who lived on campus, it was more of kind of an estimation process. Um, okay. instead of physically counting the people that are there, um, is my understanding. So these places like this, you know, these apartment complexes off of Meadow Street, they may yeah. have been 50% vacant at the time of when the census went around and did their, did their, okay. um, did their research. Um, so it's, it's definitely th something that we should pay attention to. And I would recommend the methodology would be we compare this to, you know, we pull up this map that I pulled up a few. I'll publish this map online too, so we can we can. Compare. Can you can you publish that one? That would be yes. great because I think yeah. maybe it's crazy. It's crazy. Then don't go don't go insane with looking at the numbers because the geography changed over time. Sure. But like yeah. here but, here for example, on Meadow Street, this census okay. block right here that I'm going to flash green right here, this is an apartment complex. The development here has not changed at all. I'll turn on, this is uh, off of Meadow Street right here. These apartment, it's yeah. 60, it's almost 60 people short in 2020. When you compare it 2020 to, to 2010. 2010 is again is the purple label. Um, 2020 is the orange label. So, so, but tell me if I I should look at this the same way. So, because the the census blocks change between Correct. this is my understanding. But if we went through between Meadow, North Person, the Pafton Village Apartment, Private Way, would and Ward One Sixteen, that would be one census block. Not many census blocks, but would be the same between both years, both times just to compare the numbers. So the geography is really hard to see. Um, let me see if I can make it more. Just, more there's a lot of layers. There's a so, lot of layers to this. So. so the purple lines that are right here, the purple line, this is these are the census blocks in 2010, OK? And now uh, I'm about to turn on 2020. So in our, in oh, our case. So in that case, that's the same. In our case, this one actually that I'm flashing right here that is 60 people different from 2010 to 2020, this one stayed exactly the same. And I'm, I, I lived in Amherst in 2010. I'm pretty sure the, all these buildings were there in 2010. But I think then that, like in that case, right, it's an undercounting of the student residents because I mean, that's mainly occupied by students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so but if they weren't looking... on campus in that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think that they were more empty. Yeah. This this is an example. Do you see how I'm highlighting this right here? Mm -hmm. I'm highlighting the 2010 census block, but in 2020, it's divided into three. So in 2010, yeah. it was one big block that shaped like this with 534 people in it. In 2020, it was one, two, three. That is these three numbers added and together. And Mike, what is your number in the green? The orange number in the green, I can't really read it. That's yeah. 498, let me... So it's showing that that actually grew a lot. Which is weird. By their count, yeah. right? Which is Because weird. you have the, like, oh. 490, that's like 500 and 700, and you have, like, over... Well, hang on a second, hang on just like... a second. Let me, let me, um, let me, let me find, what is the name of this? Amherst Census Blocks. See how this green one goes, though? Look at this shape. It 
it wraps all the way around here. So it includes Whereas all Whereas before of these. it used to be like four different census blocks, right? It used to be this one, the one with the 126, and it used to be the one with the 49. And it used to be no, the no, one no, next to- No, no, purple is 2021. It used to be, it used to be- No, the purple is 2010. Yeah. Oh, that's true. This is, yeah. yeah. The so it, big, the purple lines are 2010. Yeah. It used to, in this, property this area changed a lot between 2000 it, census wise it changed a lot between 2010 and 2020 that's kind of the that's kind of the discussion point here it used to be this block this block and this block and um in all right it is one block right here one block right here and one block that starts here and it snakes around and includes all of these properties there's probably 500 people in all of these apartment buildings here that are highlighted in green that I'm flashing. Oh yeah, um, right. Yeah, but so. you can see you can see all around this area, and uh, uh, then I'm gonna start calling people this so that we are not going. To, you can see across the street that now it's all rentals mostly, except the Schwartz farm. The numbers are down, right? That's 58 and 82 compared. Um, this is down 40, 146 to 179. This is yeah. down. Then this geography stayed the same, 228 in 2020 to 314. Um, this argues strongly that we should not stick with 10 precincts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I agree. Yeah. But the question then becomes, can we build 15 within the parameters right. that we have? So I, I'm going to go in the order that I, I don't know who raised the hand first and we want to apologize. I'm going to go in the order I see you on my screen. So Tammy is at the top. You're on mute, Tammy. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'm done. OK, uh, Marlene. So I know there's supposed to be or has been an expansion of presidential apartments. Is that reflected in the census It's in, in North Amherst? That's a and great I question. A, I think there were a fair number of units, but I. That's a great question. You. Let's let's look at that. There definitely was an expansion. Um, so that is right here, just for folks that know don't know. Residential apartments, basically, this whole area right here was added between 2010. You, there's solar panels on most of the buildings back here. Um, let's see. So. Oof, it's big. I just saw it. So it says 267 people when it used to be Well, it's all those together, right? So that's like yeah. 100, yeah. that's 300 and something plus. It's 320 plus, was that 232? So it's like 500 and something. This it's is like a, half, this is, it's like half the size population wise. This is a great example, Marilyn. This is something to definitely look into. Yeah. Cause I don't so, remember how many units they added on, but it was a substantial number, I think. Correct. It's, it's, I mean, this is a laundry building, a laundry and I believe like an office building, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine buildings they added on, you know, 10 plus units per building. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lee, you're next. So I, I really, I, I so appreciate this particular map because um, I think it may help in terms of the, the group estimating because if 2020, you know, well, 2020 was a census year, but you had many students, but also folks who um, employment was dependent upon the universities um, leave. Uh, and those units, particularly those apartments, are still, um, you know, still there. So the assumption is that people within this year and the next will repopulate 
those areas. And so accounting, I, I forgot which one you showed earlier that had a drop in terms of numbers of, of the residents there at the apartment complex. Uh, maybe it was Puffton Village or something. I think it was this Brandywine, right? Or not oh, Brandywine. Yeah. I forget uh, what Meadow, it is. This is Meadow Street. Meadow, this is a perfect yeah. example of what yeah. you're describing. Yeah. This so, one right here. I, I have a proposal about this because I, I'm starting to, um, I think it, this is about the data. I think, I don't know how we're going to go through and maybe we should split the map into areas and share the data and ask people to try to identify areas once uh, that are um, where we can see big discrepancies between 2020 and 2010 when we would expect either similar or reduction because that is information that we're going to need when building the precinct saying okay we think that these are undercounted so this one should we should make an effort to put them on the lower bar of so we have a um, average and plus or minus five percent so can we build the precincts with the information that we gathered um it will may be a semi-anecdotal because we it's uh, a comparison between the two years and by areas can we build them so that they are on the lower bar um mm -hmm. when we're building the precinct so we know that we are kind of in a way counting and taking them in a way Whereas if we know the precincts or in areas that we know that there hasn't been much development or it hasn't changed and we don't see much discrepancies, those we can put them on the upper range if it's possible to build. Um, it might not be possible, but there, this might be a way that we need to look at the data like census block by census block with the maps, trying to identify the areas where they might be under counting and keep a record or a log somehow. I don't know how we're gonna, if this each of these is labeled, we can put another layer of information. So where we think that there's an undercounting. So to raise a flag, so when we are building the precincts, we know, wait, in this census block, there seems to be an undercounting. So we right. should make sure that this goes to uh, we aim below when we're building the precincts, we aim to have them below the average. Yeah. It gets in cases in cases like what we're looking at right here off of Meadow Street, or even right here, the entrance to Puffton Village. These are really easy locations yeah. where we see a difference. But I just want to make sure that everyone understands. I, I will absolutely publish this data so that you folks can start playing around with it and look at it. But there are cases where it's going to get really complicated and crazy and your eyes are going to cross. Where, And this, this is an example right here where in 2010, this was one census block that had 534 people. And now in 2020, it's one, two, three, one with 111 another with 189 and another with 498 that snakes all the way around here and goes down like that. So yeah. in cases like that, your eyes are going to get, your eyes may trick you into finding these areas that may look underrepresented, but the population was just distributed amongst a different census block shape. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah but we might take a bigger, in that case, we might take the whole chunk and look at, at the whole sure. chunk whenever right. we cannot try to make it yes Tammy and then Marilyn oh, it was me sorry did Tammy have a question too yes sorry Tammy Marilyn and Tracy yeah um did we get something from this did you get something with the census that it was what their recommendations are did you say that the state sends their recommendation the state is you know how there was um they sent us an example of a 12 precinct map, what it would look like, and an example okay. of a 15 precinct. They're going to do that same thing for us, whether we want to or not. Um, but they don't. Just, I guess uh, I'm just wondering if we want to look at those to see if, I mean, are, are they kind of crunching all of this data to create those? They, those, the 12 and the 15 that we have, they, they crunched 
the estimated data, which is which is trash at this point. It's irrelevant. They are going to be delivering a a new map to us. Okay. We can absolutely look at that, so but they don't know anything about Amherst. They're purely looking at numbers. They don't know anything about neighborhoods. You know, they're just trying to equally wow. divide people. So, so we I can look I'm at just, it. I guess I'm just wondering if that's where we want to start since they since they have already done that and then we can start tweaking. So but my question is how many precincts are they gonna be? Yes, Marlene. So I had a couple questions. Um one is I don't know if you can look at one East Pleasant and Kendrick Place in the downtown area to see what those numbers look like, Mike. Sure. Close your eyes, you might go crazy with me <laughs> zooming in and zooming out on this stuff. So one East Pleasant, I think is gonna be right here where you see 209 people yeah. and you see zero in, in right. um, 2010. I'll turn oh, on the right. imagery here. Yeah. Yep, that's exactly right. Okay, and what about Kendrick? Is that its own little? Well, Kendrick is on the corner. It's on the other one. It's 94, it shows 94 people here and okay. zero in 2010. So that's right too. Okay. So one, one concern I have, given that the census was done during COVID, what, I mean, it, it seems to me that we're probably undercounting our student population who are living off, off campus, campus. Off campus. And yeah. what are the implications of that? I mean, we can't have the state, we can't redo the census, right? That's what I was saying, Marilyn, that, you know, as we consider this, and, and going back to that example that Mike shared with us, that you had a 2010 um, population in an apartment complex, and then 2020, the population went down by, you know, I don't know what you had quoted. Or 60. Yeah. Right. And so those discrepancies, that apartment complex is still there. It wasn't demolished. So the assumption um, should perhaps be built in that this place will be populated full force by the upcoming fall. And so those numbers should um, be uh, taken into account from 2010 when that apartment complex was fully uh, populated in some way. So those are things that, you know, we're uh, as a, as a board you're you're going to have to consider not only the recent construction that was just noted but those apartment complexes that are still there and in 2020 people weren't there because it's not just the students Marilyn I, I'm saying it's not just the students it's people whose livelihood was dependent upon the university and were let go which a large amount of folks were let go from these the the five colleges um, and went elsewhere you know to to live where they probably could afford to live so i you know it's it's a lot to consider is all i'm i'm suggesting and, and i guess my question is also related to i mean does, isn't population also somehow linked to funding like that we get yes yeah yes definitely <laughs> yeah, so, so you know is there any recourse so, if we can demonstrate that yes amherst was under count and in 2021 those numbers are going to rebound or maybe it was overcounted in precinct ten. <laughs> I don't know. No, I think but... uh, Tracy. I think I was I, th I was thinking from the same line of thought. We have a five percent difference between the estimated and the actual almost. Right. That's. I don't know. Is there a, any point that the census triggers some questioning between the estimated and and the actual values? No, I mean, I think what Mike was saying is that, you know, in terms of us meeting the 5%, they would be basing it on their quote final no, figures. No, no, yeah. no, 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 that, no, no, this is independent. The, the, the estimated number for Amherst was 5% mm. higher than, it wasn't, uh, it's not that the numbers, their estimation was within one or 2%, it was 5% difference, right? And it, that has a big impact on finding everything. Oh, yeah, everything. of course. Right. Yeah, so, I mean, the population numbers matter hugely for any kind of funding or anything, any program. Yeah. So everything. the question is whether I don't think we should, I don't know if it's us, the town council or the the manager should raise this question. Um, right. No, I mean, I think that's why, right, that the 
that all the political folks and the elected officials, both locally and Mindy Dom and Joe Comerford, I mean, everybody was stressing the importance of having a good count, right? And but, I know people who worked for the census, right? Because you're just trying to get the best numbers that you have. Right, but, I mean, we can, I mean, and they can continue to argue. And I think that that was part of what they were arguing even during the 2020 census is that you don't want to be undercounted. You know, there's a whole number of different populations. It's not just um, students off campus. Like as Dee talked about, it's immigrant populations. It can also yeah. be homeless people. I mean, we have a number of homeless people in Amherst, like all kinds of things. And all of those populations contribute to the undercounting. Um, so I think, I mean, I think the town will continue to like make those arguments, but at the same time for any kind of like federal or state grant funding, it's going to come down to the numbers that the census is using. Yeah. Here's a we found another error while we're looking um or probably it's an error i think there's nine people living in kendrick park <laughs> according to the 2020 census you know i think that's not necessarily <laughs> um, but so yeah. i did have i had raised my hand just um because uh, you know, you had mentioned just this idea about like going through different parts of the map i mean there are a lot of numbers here as mike was saying and that you know, I don't know whether as a group, like we can each agree to like do some homework and look at different parts, like either our districts or something and just kind of come back and see. I mean, there is a list that I had put together earlier. I don't think it Sue put it in the packet, but it was a list of all the major apartment complex in Amherst. I had put it together last year for the current ones. And so if people feel like they would have time to do some like spot checking and just kind of looking into it, it is complicated in some areas as Mike was saying, but just, it seems really hard to go through the whole map at this level to kind of see what was happening. I mean, there are I, a couple there. I mean, Mike, didn't you say there's at least like a couple hundred like census blocks in Amherst? So, so I can, progr I can yeah. programmatically do this. I can programmatically compare 2010 to 2020, but I, we're going to have to do exactly what Arena proposed, which is we're not going to be able to compare things based on like the 2020 geography. We're gonna to have to kind of group things together. Right. Um, no. So basically let's look at this example right here. Fearing Street, Lincoln, Cosby, Page, McClellan, North Pleasant, this area right in here. In 2010, it was 214 people, right? But in 2020, it's 93 plus 108. So what 100%. I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to add these two numbers together and compare it to this number. I can do that programmatically so that you guys don't have to comb okay. through everything and look at stuff. Um, but I guess I wasn't sure. I mean, so in the cases where the black boundaries are the same or very close, you know, as we talked about in the first example, mm -hmm. the one we were talking about before, or, or this it seems really right easy here. to make. Yeah, right. So, so yeah. It, kind of, it seems easy to make the comparison. I didn't know how much of if you're comparing it and the boundaries are different, like how much you can do that automatedly or how much you need to look at it. <laughs> like, I mean, I can I can do that. Know, too. I mean, I can I, I mean, can say I can say, so, hey, let's compare the ones that are identical. And then let's isolate the ones that the geography is right. different and let's put more scrutiny on those. We can do that too. I mean, maybe, so, so maybe like us as the members, just to not make you do all the work, you know, we appreciate all the work you're doing. Um, I mean, maybe if the majority of them have very close boundaries or something, if there's a way mm -hmm. to kind of that for each of those, in addition to the 2010 number and the 2020 number, you could have like some kind of change or or even just maybe, well, again, that's a different layer, but like mm -hmm. color them differently. Right. You know, so, to say like these are the same, um, or maybe color them differently on the boundaries or something. And then, and then maybe the committee members, we could look at the ones that are like the most different or something in terms then, of the boundaries themselves. But um, I, I, sorry, I also just had another question just in terms of the timing with the meeting is I know. I had offered to, I had volunteered to go and speak to the town council um, on the, at their Monday meeting, just about the committee. And we talked about having a press release or anything. I know yes. we haven't talked about that at all, but I didn't want to kind of leave that hanging there if 
if that's still the plan of what the committee wants to do. Yeah, so I was going to say, I'm sorry, I mean, I don't want to cut you, but I wanted to suggest two things uh, to split the work, and I was conscientious of discussing the press release. So can, because we have many things to discuss, and I was wondering whether we could do split the discussion on the, because this is going to inform us later when we have to build the piercings, the information, if we can identify the places that they have um, the discrepancies. So if Mike, can you do programmatically the big blocks, if it's not complicated, if, and then we revise, okay, the ones that have are within 5%, we don't look at them. Right. The ones that they have, are the, uh, they have more than 5%, even if they're big blocks, then we can start discussing or we identify before coming to the meeting, discussing, I don't know how long will it take you? Or can you split the work into two, um, into two weeks where we discuss it in two weeks, the ones? Um, I would, because I would it, try because, to get it done by two Because I think, I think even the ones that they haven't changed they're within 5%, we should check that there are no new developments in that area and then it's a fluke right and we cannot we cannot make a decision right um right but the ones that have bigger even within the big blocks um uh, and then we can identify and know where they are uh, right um just, yes so i just had a related question in terms of mike's efforts like would it would it make sense to focus not just on like um, you know, population changes of a certain percent, but maybe just as a first cut at it to look at the ones where the population changes are the largest in terms of absolute numbers, right? Okay. So if you have some outlying area, say, I don't know, down near the notch or something, and the population change from like five people to 10 people, like even though that's a huge change for that one area, like we're trying to think about this as a whole town. And so maybe we're at this stage, I mean, are we perhaps the most interested in the ones where it went up like hundreds or something? Right. <laughs> you know, compared okay. to like the percentage. Okay. I have so the five percent. Tell me, you have a your hand raised here. I just have a really quick thing. Um, is there a map of the housing stock in Amherst? I mean, I know that I know that there are discussions in like the housing authority and other places about the housing stock, and so I'm just wondering if that will help us to figure out some of the discrepancies in, uh, in population numbers. So that's just one thing, I'm just throwing that out. The other thing that I thought was really interesting that you said, Mike, was that the state is going to send back a recommendation for 12 uh, precincts. I don't know. And, I don't know whether it'll be 12 oh, or 15, didn't? Tammy. I don't know. Oh, okay, I thought I thought you were saying that they would were gonna send both. I, so I, I, I have that's no how idea. I heard you and I thought, if they're going to send back 12, then they must be considering that as a possibility. So I have no idea what they're going to send okay. us. I, right. re I really don't know. So okay, that was my fine. that was also my question, whether they're going to send us by 10, or can we request that they send 10, 12, and 15? Probably, yes, probably. Uh, if I mean, that can be a request, I, that would be great, because then we have three different starting points and how things will right. look at 10, 12, and 15. I mean, I, I think the state's maps could be helpful, but, you know, as was pointed out by Mandy Joe, that they, I mean, they're doing, and Mike, I mean, that they're doing this for a lot of towns, like over 300 municipalities, and that they don't know our community. Like, we no. know our community more. So I, I think that's why, I mean, initially when I contacted Sue after Mandy Joe's email, and I asked, can... I asked you to share that 15 district map. She said it wasn't really, she wasn't going to do that because it'd just be confusing. And they also don't really know our town and some of what the sent, what, some of what was being proposed by the state with that mapping didn't make any sense. So, so. Mike, do you know, you said that they haven't released the socioeconomic data associated with the population. Do you know when Correct. that will be released? No, I don't know. So that's a great um, a great point they so as part of this release last Thursday they released what's called the summary one summary two and I forget what the other one is but they released three data sets um, summary one is population um, and including population by race um, and then summary two I believe is primarily uh, Hispanic or Latino population which is considered 
they count that differently. Um, so those are the only numbers that they have released so far. So they haven't released anything about age or economic status or education status or anything like that. And they're very vague on their website about when that will be released. It's just like it's coming in the future. So I would not anticipate that we are going to have those results before we need to make a decision here. But we do have the statistics on counts by race and uh, count by uh, Hispanic or Latino. Well, that's in those numbers you showed us, like the P, like mm -hmm. one through yeah. 10. Yes, and, and exactly. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The, so, have you had some race? Yeah, I just, you know, procedurally, um, is there a reason why um, the chair of this committee is not being CC'd or communicated with directly from the state? It's a question. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so I understand Sue being a part of that, but mm -hmm. Sue officially on this board is considered the, the liaison between the town council, not mm -hmm. the state. So I'm, I'm just interested. Again, my role here is non-voting, but I am on the board of registrars and to assure transparency. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd be interested in knowing procedurally um, why Aline is not issued directly by the state uh, and that she, as the chair, can communicate directly to the state to the appropriate office um, or at least cc'd. So I'm, that is a concern as a resident and on the board of registrars. So the, that's why I asked to be cc'd on the previous email so that there's a record and I would like to have all the emails posted, the ones that go to the state, they posted all together in the package. Sounds I mean, good. so the email that I was going to write to the town manager and the town clerk, like asking for clarifications, I mean, I could draft something and you could send it or something. Okay. And that it would make clear that, like, the line of communication with our committee is through the chairs. Okay. Thanks. I mean, if that makes sense, but. Thanks. Great. So um, on the to do list, so before we move on, I want to keep the agenda moving before we move into the press release. Um, uh, I think the, the summary of the discussion that we have been having today, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that we need to look at this interactive map with um, care and try to identify where we see discrepancies. I think that would be our starting point for discussions when we meet, build the precincts, um, right? Because we're going to have to have a database or information of where we think there is undercounting. Because when we build the precincts, we want to take that into account. Together, we have the information where the the new developments are might be coming, so that's going to have to be part of the information. But on the other extreme, we need to identify where is the undercounting. So I see that as our to do for next time as long as Mike have produced the map and shared this map, to study this map, this interactive map, trying to identify um, sections of town. I don't know if we want to go, okay, we decide that for next time we all look at North Amherst and then we go to the central part of Amherst and then the third week South Amherst. I don't know, or we do everything at once. I would go to everything at once and then we can discuss. I don't, but I don't know. How I mean, is that something that some people could, you know, be assigned to look at their own districts or something just preliminarily? Well, the thing is, we don't have, we have, we no, have I know. A, no representation in some districts. So, and sometimes if there's, well, one, it's district so. four. We're missing people from district four. Yes. So, I mean, I could, I mean, somebody could volunteer or two people could volunteer to look at district four just okay. as a first. I mean, some of the districts, I'm in district three, which is pretty small because it's four and 10 and district four is pretty small too, because again, it's also like the denser housing. So Since it's, it's, okay, yeah. and I can, I, I can help Tracy. <laughs> well, Tracy, I was gonna say, since it's purely informational, um, I can uh, help with district four, so. Okay, I'm gonna look at district one. It's gonna be a lot of, um, 
that's I think one of the big ones with big changes. So I'm gonna make the effort of trying. But to I guess procedurally though, um, since yeah. Mike was gonna try to give us some numbers to look at, you know, that are showing some of the discrepancies, like maybe yeah. if we waited for that before we kind of dive in and, no, no, <laughs> and do, I'm look a, at it all no, ourselves. No, I'm thinking, I, I, I'm saying as soon as Mike let us know yeah, the map course, there yeah. to try to make an effort right. so that we can discuss in next meeting. And well, maybe, I, I'm going to, I just want to make, make it clear to people that I will be gone. I'm leaving the country on Monday, I will not be returning until September 9th or 10th. So my, I may, I may have limited internet access. So I don't know what my level of participation can or will be. Just, I just wanna okay. give you a heads up. Okay, thanks for letting us know. Uh, Tammy? Um, I also work full time and this is the beginning of the semester and I work in student life and so August and September are very, very densely busy months for me so this is really hard. And so I would almost rather like break out and do subcommittees or something, I mean I can set aside this time, but it's very hard for me to, to do this outside of kind of this committee time. So I'm just throwing that out there. I'm sorry. I when I signed up, I didn't realize it was mainly going to be September, the end of August, September, which are the times that I'm not really available. Yeah, um, I also thought this was going to be a late summer activity and things were delayed. So I had actually indicated when I submitted my um, papers that I would not be available during specific dates, which includes the next few meetings. So um, I apologize, but it was, it may be that there weren't any other people in this district or my precinct that were available to do it. So why don't we, um, why don't we proceed by having Mike create the map that we're going to look at? Um, I can look at district, um, precinct, sorry, district five and district two two being, I think, Tammy and Marilyn's, right? So you guys are, are both stressed for time. Um, I think uh, I think two and five are not gonna be that hard. So I can look at them and we'll see, and you guys are gonna take on one, three, and four. I can, I can take one. That, that's, we already know so that there's big changes. So we'll do what, he, those of us that are doing this, we'll do what we can for the next meeting. Yeah. And, and we'll just go through, you know, We'll prepare what we can and we'll try to get through as many of these yeah. as we can. Now, and I have a question for the group. Sorry, go ahead, Peggy. Just to be clear, we're identifying the areas that we think are under Under, under counted for whatever yes. reason. Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, so my comment question was just that I did have this list. I had asked you to put it in the packet earlier, just a list like summarizing the apartment complexes. I don't know, just the bigger and smaller. Is that helpful to anybody? And it shows what, yes. um, what it yeah. shows what precincts they're in. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. okay. So that's current. That's current. That's already existing. It does not include the number of beds. It just includes the number of units. But at least it's an indication. It indicates like where the clusters of population are. Yeah. Is okay. this it? Is this it? I don't right know. Here, it's in no. the. No, it's a. Uh... No, it was just a, a list. It was just like a, a list. spreadsheet it's, list, I think. It's a small, it's a small document. Um, look I'll send it. it. Okay. Yes. For some, reason, for some reason, I thought we loaded it. Maybe we didn't. So okay. it would go in this this uh, packet for the 18th. Is that correct? Yeah. So we'll know where to find it. Okay. Thank you, Tracy, for doing that. Do we want to? I mean, we could put it in the packet for the next time, right? Because yes. let's yeah. do it there and oh, then we'll okay. just start that packet. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so let just some questions of time is 7.10. So the next item on the agenda is tends to state and it's a press release. Do you were gonna Right. So I have uh, sent through email the link. I put it as a Google Doc so you all could look at it, but I can also share. Am I able to share Mike? Uh, I believe so. Oh, yes, okay. I, I didn't receive it. Okay. I, 
yeah, it's whatever email is the general the email that Sue's been using. Um, so I wanted to make it so you all could also edit. It uh, just came. It's date. I just came through on me, and it says the timestamp is seven oh three. So, okay. okay, good. I see some of you are are in there, um, but I'll also share so we can all look mm -hmm. at it together. Okay. So, um, scrolling up, usually a press release, I mean, it can be two pages, but you try to just make it one page. I still think this is a bit wordy, so I could use your help in um, maybe taking out some of the, um, the wordiness. <laughs> but uh, the goal of a press release is to state in the first uh, at least the first two paragraphs, uh, normally the first, um, the main points. Um, and so that's what I tried to do here. And then, um, you know, you put the details, explanatory and descriptive details later. Um, so it would help, again, uh, for your editing, you're able to go in here. It's, it's listed as a suggestion if you go in and edit. And then we can all agree upon those edits and make the edits tonight. So if you want a um, couple of minutes maybe to read over. So I have a couple of questions about it. Um, one, are we allowed to do group editing sure. like with open meeting law or does it have to be like kind of offline? Like, so typically what... No, we're all doing... Done? This is during the meeting. Oh, during this the is meeting. Your meeting. Yeah, <laughs> oh, no. <go> <laughs> all no. right. <laughs> Um, but I think, too, it seemed that one of the things we wanted to do, I mean, um, is I like towards the front of the um, press release is just talk about how we are looking for like this is a public process and we're looking for public input. Oh, OK. I might even want to state that like toward even in the first paragraph. OK, because it it happens at the end, but definitely. No, of course, but just, yeah. because, you know, a lot of people, like, they read it on their phone or whatever. No, they absolutely. Go down and scroll. Yeah, so we could but, do that. You know, we want to let the public know that we're starting. Some of this informational stuff could even go further down on the press release. Absolutely. So and, um, let's so we need a line that says um, uh, so Amherst is undertaking the redrawing of district boundary lines by convening a districting advisory board, which is who we are, state law, and but we can put I mean, there. Some of that stuff, I would put that stuff down further down and just say, you know, we wanted to let people know that this is a short time frame for this process, right? That the, the, like fine, the paragraph that, the group will submit a report by October. Right, and that, that paragraph. Be, right, the report will be by October, um, and it will, you know, have to be approved by the. It will be submitted to the state by October. It will be have to be approved by the council and submitted to the state by October by the end of October. Um, so that's the last paragraph. Yeah, that's in the last paragraph. But we could yeah. certainly put it at and the top. That, you know, we just received like last week the census data became available, um, and as Mike shared, there is that interactive resource for people to take a look at the data themselves and we invite public comment like through various channels and we also okay. are looking for these members <laughs> if we can find some all right so tracy <laughs> can you like just if we can smooth it out but if you want to because that was a lot if you oh, want sorry. to put that in this top paragraph that's fine and we can straighten out or i can straighten out the language what you just said so that's all down here at the bottom. Let's see. So I could take that out here. Um, and I have residents. So you're saying here residents could submit questions or concerns to the town clerk uh, yeah. and board lays on SUADET because we're still using uh, SUADET's yeah. email as the place right. in which to do so. I, I think and, and we did say that it should have like a subject line like DAB or something. Yes, and I also with the subject might, line. Right, I might say also um, members of the public and not residents. Yeah. Just to make it more broad. Oh, okay, from there, okay. All right. Marion, did you have your hand raised? Oh, I, 
I didn't, but I do have, it does say that our meetings are on Wednesday. I don't know that our, all of our meetings are going to be on yeah. Wednesday. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. No, the and meetings that should be said that, that once a week or something. Weekly. Weekly. Well, pro close to weekly. Yeah. 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 Or in the not, calendar. Not the every service. week. The, yeah, main, the I, meetings are posted on the calendar. I yeah, actually I have a good. problem with Wednesday meetings. <laughs> Okay. The semester starts, but I'm sure that's gonna be on the next. I just schedule. wrote it to, to put it on next week's agenda, Tracy. To put no, of it. course. I'm just I'm just throwing that out there. I looked at my yeah. calendar and I was like, this yeah. is not good. <laughs> I just put it on the agenda. The next meeting we should discuss the following meetings. So, Tracy, you were saying that how edits can take place. To me, the public meeting, the open meeting law would require us to edit this now. Yeah. Do you know of other ways in which uh -oh. we would? So what I'm familiar with with committees, I know the community um, safety working group has done this and committees that I've been a part have done this, uh -huh. is where there's a, a version shared. The key is that you can't have a quorum of members discussing it. Okay. So what happens is that so the community safety working group has done it sometimes when they need really quick turnaround of stuff, uh -huh. like letters they want to send to the town manager or the council. And so somebody prepares it and they send it to their staff liaison and the staff liaison then distributes it. And then there's one person who's offered to edit it and then it like circulates back to that person. And anyway. Okay, so, which would take another week, which would take another week. I mean, it doesn't. So happen. I, you know. Yeah. I mean, I know in some of the cases, like with the community safety working group, they would actually be basically approving a version without another meeting. But it would just be based on people editing, but not having like a discussion. If, if does, is that okay? I allowed? see what you're saying. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think to be safe uh, is that we edit now. Right. I mean, I think alternatively, we could um, we could tell the council. I mean, I would like a little guidance if people can stay on for a few minutes about what what are the key messages we want to send to the council when I speak to if I do speak during public comment period about the committee. Um, but we could also tell at that at that time, I could tell them that we're working on a press release because we really do want public input and um, and then maybe we could you know, because they meet on Wednesday, on Monday, and then we meet on Wednesday, we could update our press release and then release it right after that. I like that idea. Um, it's, it's double the exposure. Because you, yeah. you put it out there during this town council meeting, and then we have a press release at a and, different time. Right. And then also, okay. I mean, the, the count, town does have their own person, like Brianna releases a lot of the press releases too. So maybe we don't even have to do our own press release. We could just like piggyback on theirs. Yeah. Their, well, no. I don't know, but they're, but they're, I will say though that their press releases, they do go out to all of the town, like mailing lists and things that are already existing. So it is distributed, but. Mm -mm. So. Yeah, the CSWG did their own press release. Um, Could I, I help with it and it was distributed to all the media. Um, but you're, you're trying to get public input. So, you know, some of the newsletters are also included with that, which is also what the CSWG did. Um, so it's up to you all. I, I have a suggestion. Um, so, uh, Tracy, you were asking about directions about for the board. I yeah, think for, for the council, for the council. So I think looking at this, I think this is kind of the information that we want to tell them we are meeting, we have the data. Uh, I mean, do you want updating. to speak to them as the chair and and make yourself like publicly known as the chair, the co-chair, or do you and Peggy want to talk together as co-chairs or just as a voice of the committee if people then... I'm willing to share, but... Uh, I'm... <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I'm willing. I'm, I'm just willing saying, I mean, I'm happy to do it too as a member of the committee, but if it seems like it would serve our interests better for for everybody to rec like the council and stuff to recognize that you're like a point of contact but however you want 
When is it? It's on on Monday. It's Monday, and um, I mean the public comment period is usually close to the beginning of the meeting. I believe the meetings usually start at six thirty. Um. So I'm just speaking for me. I'm perfectly willing to do this, but I don't actually think that it's necessary in terms of. Yeah. Council recognition or chair recognition. So yeah, yeah, okay, that's fine. I'm happy to do it. And I, yeah. I mean, I had thought. I mean, the reason I had proposed doing it during public comment period is that the town manager's report is near the end of the meeting, which can be at 11, 11:30, or midnight, and that's and after the town manager's report is when they have the committee reports. Right. And so, I mean, that's just way too late. And just for the, I mean, just to make it higher profile, just to say something, and so. Oh, definitely. Uh, we want people. We want to hear this is the public. I don't right, really exactly at this point. It's the public. Right. So exactly. doing it during public comment is the time to do it. Uh, I have a comment about the this uh, uh, Tracy. If you can do it, I, I, I get. I don't oh, think fine. it has to. Be, that would be great. I'm looking at the press release, and I think this is should be the base. Okay. I'm, I'm from the point of view that I would like to have a press release sooner than later. And I'm willing that doesn't have, we will never have a perfect press release. Because you can edit and edit and things can go. And if people are okay with allowing me to make some changes, uh, prove it with some of maybe take now if everybody can take two minutes with some to read it and suggest edits and then decompile this and sends it out. Because I think the fact that we are low on on membership, and uh, I think we have, we have a very short time, and I would not want to wait another week before we send it out. So if people if people would be okay to send them the comments to me, and she edits it, so to approve it, pending changes submitted. I I mean I'd still oh, like maybe to just now. I'd like to just hold it to next week because it is okay. getting close to 730. Um, okay. I do think that if we do make, if we do speak during public comment period, that that will generate some of its own publicity. You know, we can make our own points and I can see the media reaching out to us after. And at that time, we could also share like a more detailed press release or something. Okay. Um, but in, okay. in the interest of time, I, yeah. I, I don't, I don't have much time left, but I have yeah. other commitments and I, so one one comment I have is my understanding was that these meetings were supposed to be for two hours. Can we try to keep it in that two hour yeah. time? Yeah, frame? exactly. Okay. Okay. So let's. Um, I think that the, we can read and postpone the 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 acceptance as a standing item for next meeting, uh, pending revisions brought up by the, co the committee members. So can I just make one uh, suggestion? Yeah. You can go on here and they we don't have to approve them. It's just it's in the suggesting mode, as you could see. So if you all could just put in your suggestions or make comments, then we can approve that all together, you know, and vote on it all together. Well, again, I'm not voting, but you all could do that. Uh, so if it's in the suggesting mode, that might uh, be a better, you know, okay. in, in terms of open meeting law, or whatever. Okay. 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 So we both postpone the vote on the first release and the acceptance until next week. Yes. Okay. Um, so we have two more items. The one was the ranking of the priorities, setting up the precincts, and I think we've been talking about these things along the way. And but we can. I'm gonna keep it as a standing item for future agenda so we can skip it. And then I want to ask if people have things not anticipated in the last 48 hours. I have one quick comment. Uh, I was in touch with the council um, regarding the dates of the vote. And they're asking us what's the earliest that we can have a map for them to vote. Uh, <laughs> I've been saying we need you to meet on the, 25th, the week of the 25th because we don't have any time and the latest that we can meet and they were, they were asking. So I'm going to push on that, uh, on that because 
this is going to be very complicated and we need all the days. Um, so that's going to be my answer, but I wanted to bring it up. Today. Yeah, and I think, I mean, also, I brought up last time, right, that the council's own rules call for them to um, consider yes. an item at least at two meetings before they vote. And sometimes they um, don't follow that rule because they're like tight for time, but especially in terms of allowing the public adequate access and time yeah. to comment, I think it's really important for they follow their rules on this. Yeah, yeah. So that was, that's my, that was my opinion, but I wanted to bring it forward to everybody before I say. I mean, do you want us to like vote and say that we affirm, but we can either way. No. Okay. Okay. So, um, so, so I, do you, did they seem like they would be able to meet later in October than the 18th? I, they, they don't want, but I think, I mean, we don't have many, sorry. we don't have many options. I, I don't think we have, <laughs> we, I don't think we, can, we cannot produce a map before. I don't think that unless suddenly that's why part of the discussion that we're having about the 10 precincts, if we have 10, maybe things could move faster. But if we have to go to 12, 15, things are going to be get messy. Even with 10, it's going to be messy because the numbers are so wide. Mm -hmm. Sure. So we need every single day possible that we have. That's mine. OK. So shall we call it a day? I'm sorry, I'm going to try to keep us on time. Yeah. OK. Uh, I make a motion to adjourn. Oh, can I can I mention one thing oh, really quick? Yeah. yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do, folks, is on the district taking advisory board page on the right hand side where there's resources and it shows agendas, packets, different things. Below that, there's interactive map and and below that, I believe I put a link to the raw census data, which is in Excel format, so you can download it. It's in data. If you're not a data person, it's going to look crazy to you. But if you are a data person, and if you're a, there's a member of the public out there who's a data person, they can feel free to download it and start processing it and looking at it. Um, I'm going to produce a second interactive map that will be that will pop up there either later tonight or tomorrow morning, um, and that will be the comparison of basically it'll be the map that we were looking at. It'll show the 2010 2020 data and the 2010 data with the labels of the population within each census block. So I am i don't understand the rules of open meeting law. So I err on the side of caution and I try not to email people um, <laughs> regarding business. So I'm just letting you guys know now to be on the lookout for that to be there tomorrow morning, mid or noon or something, okay? Okay, thank you. And thank you. Also, in that aspect, if you want items on the agenda, do send me an email. I try to send it to Sue by Friday, or I try to send it before either Friday or Sunday so that there's time to adjust things. OK. Mm -hmm. OK. So there was a motion to adjourn. Somebody second it? Second. OK. Um, Marilyn, we vote yeah. on it? Yes. Tammy Parks? Aye. Peggy Shannon? Aye. Tracy Seffen? Aye. Mahek Kelani? Aye. Irene Hovne? Aye. Meeting adjourned. Thank right. you. Thank you, guys. Have a good night, Bye. everyone. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Bye.